Hi, this is Dr. Tochu Chihio, Be With The Health Zone. Today is World Kidney Day, and the theme for this year is children and kidney diseases. We're here at St. Nicholas Hospital with Dr. Ebu Bamboye, who is the clinical director of St. Nicholas Hospital, but he's also a nephrologist. That's his specialty. And so, Dr. Bamboye, it's really nice to see you. I know you've been one of our guests on the show, but I, you have a couple of events today. We just came from the um, Holy Cross Catholic School, where it's reached an elementary school where uh, St. Nicholas did a World Kidney Day um, outreach with the kids. What is the, if there was one main thing you want the children at the elementary school and then at the secondary school that you'll be at later in this afternoon, there's one thing you want them to go away with about kidney disease, what would that be? Well, can I make that two things? Okay, two things, <laughs> two things. The first thing is that they must come to terms with the fact that whatever they do in childhood would have implications on what they would be later in life. The choices they make now, the lifestyle choices that they make now, would be a reflection of their health status in which they can live. So if they overfeed, they eat the wrong things, even though that is being done now, very often we find that the effects of those are seen much later in life. And increasingly we're finding that children are becoming obese. On account of this, many of them are developing hypertension at much younger ages than we used to see them in the past. We're starting to see adult types of diabetes occurring in children, even in their adolescence, all because of obesity. And the obesity is just consequence of their eating the wrong things. They're all now fast food dependent. Yes. They're not exercising as much as we did in the past. On account of that, they're becoming obese. And the prevalence of hypertension and diabetes, even amongst the adolescents, is becoming much higher than we had seen in the past. So if children eat the right things now, they exercise as much as they should now, they're taught not to take too much salt in their diets. So avoid all the sweets and cakes and biscuits. Sugary drinks. Learn to develop a taste to eat things like vegetables and fruits and nuts. Much later in life, they're less likely to develop some of the problems that are becoming major causes of uh, morbidity and mortality amongst the adults that we're seeing. But as specific as it relates to the kidneys, you do realize that some of the commoner causes of kidney issues amongst Nigerians today are hypertension, in which the blood pressure is much higher than normal, diabetes, in which the blood sugar is higher than normal, and sometimes also the use, I mean, the what we call chronic glomerulonephritis, which very often is a consequence of chronic infections. So if you do have an infection, even if it's a sore throat, a lesion in the skin and you have a rash, rather than attempt to treat that yourself or go to a chemist to pick up a medication, just go to a doctor and have it properly diagnosed and make sure the appropriate treatment is given. When that does happen, the likelihood that it becomes a chronic infection it could consequently become a problem much later in life. It's also much less. Um, we find that probably the commonest cause of kidney failure in the environment, chronic kidney disease in the environment, is what we call a chronic glomerulonephritis. And that, very often, research has shown, is a consequence of chronic infections. So when you find things like hepatitis B, which affects about one out of every seven Nigerians, and by the C, which affects about 8% of Nigerians. Malaria. Malaria. And you find that if these are detected early and treated appropriately, the likelihood that the later in life results in problems with kidney is much less. And that's why the International Society of Nephrology International Federation of Kidney Foundations have selected a 
as the theme for this year's World Kidney Day. That kidney disease in children. Detect it early, act early, or act promptly to prevent you know, problems later in life. Um, there's some things that I know you've mentioned to me in the past that you actually mentioned on this show that people don't connect with kidney failure. I think people are starting to understand the association between diabetes, hypertension, and kidney disease and ensuing kidney failure. What about something that's very, very prevalent in our community, analgesic use, um, bleaching creams? Could you talk a little bit about that? Uh, those are some of the not uncommon, they probably won't be as common as I would say yes. about the practice. But we also find that the abuse of medications, unfortunately, many of us can go over the counter and buy just about any medication that we can get. And it's not uncommon amongst particularly the manual laborers. At the end of a very hard day at work, they go to a chemist and they're given what they call ashakwa. Ashapo will consist of a cocktail of lots, three or four different medications, all from the same producer, containing paracetamol, or two or three different brands of paracetamol, and maybe two or three other brands of non or inflammatory drugs. And they take these every day. And I know we've mentioned before that up to recently it was one of the more common causes of kidney failure in Australia. And it's something that we found is also not uncommon in our environment, either as what we call an initiating factor or as an aggravating factor. We said that on its own it can cause kidneys, kidney issues. But if you already have some problems with kidney, maybe from hypertension or diabetes, and you then take these medications, the rate at which the kidneys deteriorate yeah. would be a lot more rapid. Also, the use of bleaching. These are things that we're finding are not uncommon. Maybe amongst the women, but increasingly these days also amongst even men. Many of these bleaching creams contain steroids, and many of them also contain heavy metals like mercury. And you might think, well, this is being applied topically. But many people don't realize that the largest organ in the body is actually the skin. Once you apply it, Enough of it gets absorbed and is carried to the kidneys where it's concentrated. And almost incredibly will lead onto some damage in the kidneys. Some research has been done in Enugu where they've looked amongst their patients that had nephrotic syndrome. And they found that this was more common amongst those who had a history of the use of bleaching creams when compared to those who didn't. So that's a factor. But also the use of various herbal preparations and you find that this also is not an uncommon at least aggravating factor of most many of the patients that have received the product in Many of them would have had a history of use of it either in the native form but sometimes you have a lot of so-called herbal supplements that are cool. being peddled and because they are made abroad people assume that they are they're safe to use. But people don't realize that some of the countries with the highest prevalence of chronic kidney disease in the world today, this is like Taiwan. Taiwan has the highest rate of CKD. And the majority of those that we found have chronic kidney disease in the background, actually from what we call Chinese herbal nephropathy. That is from the use of several of these so called herbal supplements. So we need to be very conscious, and any opportunity I get, such as this, one wants to emphasize the need for people to be cautious about the use and abuse of both orthodox and such non-orthodox medications. Dr. Bakwe, this has been great as always. You've been very informative, and hopefully the audience will take quite a bit away from today and the children that you will be seeing very shortly you know at the high school but it's been a pleasure thank you very much for being on the house so thank you thank you so we've been talking with dr Ebuban Boye about kidney disease uh commemorating today's world kidney day with the special theme children and kidney disease